Something longtime subscribers might remember is that I used to have Club Mario videos on here, and a whole bunch of other things, commercials, whatever. And I had to take them all off when I affiliated with TGN. So, um, you know, anyone at TGN, um, <laughs> I'm not even going to, you know what, I have nothing nice to say. Anyways, that cost me a lot of views, also cost me a lot of money. Recently at my other channel, which is not monetized because of, well, again, of TGN. Your cost, TGN is costing me money. Let me just be honest about that. But um, I put up a Kids WB thing, got a lot of views. Now, anyone remembers, I used to have Club Mario videos and so forth and so on. I do manage a Club Mario account. Lost the password, regained the password. Don't know what the new password is, so I just leave it logged in 24 hours a day on a different computer. And what I'm doing there is something I meant to do a long time ago, is I found these video powers on the internet, and I've been meaning to preserve them. I know they're probably all over YouTube, but, you know, this is my preservation for it. And I want to talk about video power, Captain N, uh, Super Mario Bros. Super Show, Club Mario, but mostly focusing on Club Mario and video power, my take on that. And that's today's podcast. I know I call these podcasts, and I doubt anybody can actually put these on an iPod and listen to the cast. But nonetheless, uh, video game shows have been there since the infancy of infancy of uh, video games. But while other people talk about like all this other stuff, I don't know why they're they're fascinated. Like the, I guess it's called the CBS Starcade or Arcade Hour or something. It had Qbert, Donkey Kong, whatever. I have absolutely no memories of this, but not. Um, there's some anime cartoons released from Japan about video games and so forth and so on. I also have no memories of these things. My, to my knowledge, the first video game show, while I do have faint memories of Space Ace and Dragon's Lair, my, my um, earliest memory, obviously is when I saw a promo commercial of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show with a guy, I swear it wasn't Captain Lou, it was some skinny guy, but you know, memory is finicky, finical like, uh, finicky like that, and sometimes I just would not be paying attention while I was playing with toys with the neighbor kids, and the guy's holding a pizza, and he's talking about how Super Mario Bros. Super Show is going to pre pre premiere on Monday. I missed the entire first week, except for uh, Zelda, when the neighbor kids ran, like, Zelda's a big deal. Um, I guess Zelda's a big deal, but, uh, you know, I I have all the Zelda games except uh, Breath of the Wind. Yes, I, I somewhere I have the CDI games. Pathetic as this. That's the main reason I have a CDI, is to play these bad games. Um, is there a Zelda game I'm missing? Let's focus on that just real quick here moment. Uh, ages, seasons, three games in the CDI, one and two, the past. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm missing a few. I don't have, um, I don't have the GBA version of the Link to the Past, so, wait a minute, that's the only one I'm missing. <laughs> yeah, no, I guess I have all the Zeldas. Oh, no, wait, and I don't have the, the last two. What is it? Triforce Heroes or Tri Ace? No, that's not right. Triforce Heroes, and I don't have. I don't have a, a link between worlds. Alright, so um, other than that, um, the main reason I don't have those is price. They're still $40. I want to get the cartridges so my wife can also have her own Zelda Quest. Um. And obviously I don't have uh, Breath of the Wild because it's not out yet. I don't get pre-production preview copies, and, you know, that, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. So the neighbor kids went ahead and ran as fast as they could to go home and watch Zelda. They didn't even own Zelda games, so I don't know what the attraction here was. As, as I got older, the uh, attraction is the same Link had. <laughs> Whoever designed Princess Zelda for the cartoon, well, they they certainly uh, certainly knew what they were doing. And um, starting from that week onwards, I'm like, well, I got to set the timer here and watch Super Mario Brothers Super Show. In retrospect, the 
the segments are stupid and everything. I remember the magic carpet one. I mean, this kid, we didn't care much for the magic carpet cartoon. In fact, I, I don't really care for that cartoon at all. I don't like the genie. It just, I, it's weird that would be the first one they released on home video. The segment that was released on that tape where um, Mario and Luigi lose their minds and at the end Luigi's squawking like a bird, that has absolutely nothing to do with... Um, that, that episode was not attached to that episode. See, I noticed because I watched these things. I would record them, I'd rewind them, I'd watch them like ten times, probably more like two, but ten times before I went to bed every night. So I have some of these episodes pretty memorized. And how the Club Mario's got recorded, it was just pure accident, I guess. I don't know. I, I knew something was coming to an end here. Um, for whatever reason, Nintendo was not pleased. Um, I really have a theory that the adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3 was not meant to be part of Captain N., but was actually meant to be the Season 2 cartoons. Um, whether they... Maybe they couldn't get Captain Lou and Danny Wells to come back or something. Or maybe um, the whole plan was to go the Club Mario route, but this time with new cartoons. Um, which would explain why some Captain N's were cut down to 15 minutes. These are genuine Captain N's. These later aired as part of Captain N and Super Mario World. But I think that some of them were going to be cut down to, well, I say 15 minutes. It's more like 10. They lose 50% of the show. The show, um, without commercials, is roughly 21.30. That's 21 minutes and 30 seconds. And I believe that Captain N... So this is what I honestly believe was in the planning stages, and NBC gave an offer to Deke that was too good to pass up. A one-hour show. One hour for a very highly rated cartoon, which was Captain N with New Super Mario Brothers 3. And to make sure that kids sat through Captain N, which was, which was all right. The cartoons aren't the best. I don't have nostalgia glasses on or anything. I, I mean, I, I, see, I saw it then, I see it now. Captain N is not really the best cartoon. But The Adventures of Super Mario Brothers 3 has all kinds of hijinks from Koopa abducting the entire United States to uh, Mario almost marrying an ugly mermaid to garbage in Brooklyn uh, whatever, Godzilla's mom <laughs> or something like that so I do believe that these um, uh, I don't have any numbers off the top of my head so just follow me on here I believe that the adventures of Super Mario Brothers 3 which would have roughly 44 episodes, was going to be season two of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. But since whatever happened, the Captain Lou and Danny Wells didn't come back, that law was passing, the channel, I mean, the show has to have some EI value to it before the EI rating existed. Whatever, Club Mario was created. The scripts were worked as is, um, if that is obvious, and maybe that... Tommy Treehugger and Co-MC and friends uh, were supposed to go ahead and have the Super Mario Brothers 3 segments in uh, instead of the original Super Show. But when that when NBC made that offer, it just couldn't be passed up. So, um, 40, 44 days sounds about right. Um, because if we minus 44 from 65... Uh, that leaves us 21, even though we're, we need a, actually, um, it's supposed to be a 13-week rotation, and that's uh, one, that's one-fourth of a year. It's a 13-week rotation, and that's why I think the Captain Ends were getting cut down to, I'm going to say, a 15-minute segment. Uh, but that's why the Captain Ends were getting cut down. I think that they were going to replace The Legend of Zelda and uh, these really truncated Captain Ends would be the Friday cartoon. And then if you want to know what I think they would have done if they had lasted a, a third season, um, a third season, I think that they would have they would have uh, either brought back 
Captain N or they would have uh, made new Club Mario segments and then re reinserted the original Super Show from a s two seasons before with Zelda. And then the fourth season, same thing, Mario 3. Um, or, or maybe they would have gone... Because if you notice, the animation is real crappy for the third season of Captain N and Mario 3. It could be that those were going to be for a, a third season. Whatever happened, though, what I'm talking about here, is pure 100% speculation. I don't know what happened. At the same time, GamePro started offering an infomercial as kind of a show. And, um, you know, that, that came about as GamePro TV. I may have only caught one or two episodes. To tell you the truth, though, I don't actually remember any of these episodes. Again, Las Vegas was a strange market for television. And, it, you know, what people think is common just wasn't common. Um, like, one of the shows we had on Channel 33 was these people bought airtime at 6.30 in the morning, and they made their own little claymation show in the back of Cool Collectibles. This is with the original owner, Arnold, and uh, his family. Well, um, of course, Cool Collectibles, they had their own problems, and that's a different... That, that's actually a whole video, the history of comic book shops in Las Vegas. But, uh... I'm not ever, probably ever going to uh, talk about that subject. No discussion there. So, what what was the deal? Why why did Deke and Nintendo and everybody do this? I think Nintendo was growing wary. The cartoons, I don't even believe, aired in Japan or in any international markets. I think it was solely the United States, Canada and maybe other Anglo countries like Australia or England, Ireland, New Zealand. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it aired over there. I do know it aired in the United States, for sure. And the other, the other problem is, like, take a look at this. Um, Robin Hood, they did an episode of Captain N with Robin Hood. And Robin Hood, the Prince of Thieves, had just come out. Obviously, Kevin Costner and friends couldn't be there. So, you know, Robin Hood's a public domain character based on legend. Nobody owns Robin Hood. I mean, where, which direction could anyone go in that episode? That's the first episode of the third season. So, maybe if they stuck with the weekday format and retooled it. Now, I understand a lot of these cartoons are retooled as Captain N and the Game Masters and then claim that the Acclaim Masters from the Power Team segments of Video Power. But, you know, would, would there have been staying power for Captain N? I, I believe so. But they had to do things I guess they could have started this with the uh, by moving it over to the Super Show and phasing out the Saturday morning Captain N. Or they could have had Captain N there uh, entirely, but say they phased it out. And so, you know, this is this is how it breaks down. The first season of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show has the Mario and Luigi sitcom segments as the bookends, and the cartoon itself is the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Then the second season, this is not what really happened. This is what should have happened. The second season would have obviously been uh, the Club Mario bookend, bookend segments with Super Mario Brothers 3. The first season's cartoons, obviously Zelda. The second season cartoons, obviously truncated Captain N. And then the third season, I believe, would have been Super Mario World. So they would have needed... Um, they would have needed uh, uh, whatever 65 minus 13 is, which is, um, uh, well, I don't know, 22? Oh, that can't be right. Um, I don't know where I got 22 from. 42, I think. Right? 52? 52. That's correct. 52. 52 Super Mario World, which I think was more than possible for the doing. Now, what comes next is a bit of a problem. 
because see this that would have been ninety one. The, the first one was eighty nine ninety. The second one was ninety ninety one, and the last one was ninety one ninety two. Now we would have been at 92, 93. Not only would that mean things like Star Fox, uh, Final Fantasy, Super Metro. I mean, there's a whole lot of things that they, they could have done. They could have upped the animation, had more special effects, made better quality, um, have something more reboot-like. Reboot's actually Captain N done correctly. You know, but... Metroid, and um, well, it would have made sense because Super Metroid and Metroid 2 were were Met Super Metroid was on the horizon. Metroid 2 was out on Game Boy, so it makes sense to keep Mother Brain. Um, but King Hippo, you know, an eggplant wizard. I mean, you know, Punch Out though was re-released, so um, yeah, the the it it could have worked could have worked. They, and then they could have done slight development where Simon, Mega Man, everyone started to look like uh, their counterparts from the game. Um, yeah, this totally could have worked. Um, and, you know, again, keep it as, as the um, Friday cartoon. And then what, what game, what Mario game? Well, see, Mario is missing was the the game at the time or, or Hotel no, Hotel Mario wasn't out Mario was missing was just about to come out well it's very simple they could have called it Super Mario All-Stars and to save money yeah they could have had the original Super Show segment on Monday to then Mario 3 on Tuesday this is all repeating Mario World on Thursday and then Mario is missing on I mean, not Thursday, on Wednesday. And Mario's Missing is on Thursday. That's how they could have done a, a fourth season. The fifth season then would have been um, 92, 93. And like I said, things like Star Fox... Wait, no. Excuse me, that is incorrect. The first season was 89, 90. The second season was 90, 91. The third season was 91, 92. No, yeah, the fourth season would have been 92, 93. Street Fighter 2 could have guest starred. Um, Simpsons could have guest starred. This is all rights and clearances. It would have been looked at as promotion. And it still could have been syndicated. Syndication was very powerful until the early 20th century. Uh, they could have taken the show and slapped it on Kids WB or Fox Kids as a weekday thing. I think that... Um, Kids WB would have been the way to go. Deke at the same time was looking for acquisition. Disney was stepping up their investment into Deke. They could have slapped it together with Sailor Moon and the syndication package. Uh, it could have ended up on Toonami, or the reruns could have, anyways. Um, and, you know, the show could have easily ran, is what I'm saying. Now, they went with Club Mario in reality, in our reality. And if you want to see Club Mario outside of YouTube, I'll say just type in Club Mario number one. It'll, it should take you to uh, one of my sub accounts that happens to have nothing but Club Mario. Going to Club Mario, the idea of this extreme uh, leftist hippie crap. Nothing against Co MC, nothing against. Mike Rollins or Chris Coombs or Don Kurt Weldon. But it was leftist to a large degree. Peace, love, recycle. I mean, come on. Nobody really cares about that. Kids sure didn't. Um, one review I saw, someone reviewed my video. I, I always know it's my video. I made it low resolution on purpose um, so that way I would always know when someone's stealing the video off of YouTube. And one of the one of the things I, I never understood is why have that? I don't mind showing the information part, satellite surfing, all that stuff. But why why take the environmentalist stance? Why why alienate fifty percent of people who don't believe in that environmentalist garbage? Uh, I like to recycle when I pay, but. At the same time, I've got to question the motives of people who are behind recycling and the environmentalist movement and everything. 
And, it, you know, it could be just a, a genuine naivete, but considering that um, I do see um, Haim Saban's name on the credits and everything, it really wasn't the way to go. And for too long, you know, you know, one demo, not demograph, one ideology has dominated uh, programming, whether it's kids programming, adult programming, or whatever. When eventually what happens is people stop tuning in. And that's exactly what I feel has happened when, with the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. People stop tuning in, especially... Club Mario was just atrociously bad. There, there's no redeeming value to Club Mario. They had the photon segments, spaced out theater, or whatever. You know. Um, and I, I don't really think that it was indoctrination or anything like that. Um, it, it just, it looked like just a terrible children's program. So, yes, it had the environmentalist leftist slant, but, you know, Kurt Weldon's Dr. Know-It-All didn't come off like that. Um, you know, yeah, peace, love, recycle. Okay, sure, whatever. And co MC, keep it real, whatever. And then I can't even explain Tammy, Tree Hogger, or Evil Eric. The segments aren't very long. Um, if I cut out the theme songs and the bumpers, the yeah, segments are barely five minutes. Same with the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Real, real short. Now, moving on, there was, from acclaim, at the, the first season was the same time, 90-91, Video Power. There's supposed to be 65 episodes for the first season. I already seen, by uh, scanning ahead in the episodes I got, they even start repeating part two. Um... To say that there's problems with the animation of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show and Captain N and Zelda, these things look like these these things look like Miyazaki compared to the video quality and the power team. Uh, the power team has its own charm, but it ain't great. What really gets me is Johnny Arcade. Uh, I don't understand. Is this kid like AVGN? He lives in a basement and. And then what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He has he has this extreme, totally radical, uh, awesome, in a J.D. Roth kind of way. No offense to J.D. Roth. Um, what exactly does he live in? Um, I don't have anything against the actor. He's basically being told what to do. Okay. So let me set up the premise for Johnny Arcade. Johnny Arcade lives in this... I don't know, does he live in it? He always, because it, he, he comes from somewhere. He comes from somewhere, and then he grabs some games. And boy, was his clothes terrible. He grabs some games. He goes over to this area that has all these game consoles next to him. Stuff that Acclaim didn't even make for. Acclaim did not make games for the TurboGrafx-16. If there was distribution, maybe, but they didn't make for that. They're reviewing other companies' games. Um, obviously, the power team is all acclaim. And yeah, he goes over and he watches the power team on a couch. Uh, what is... I? He, it's old shame for acclaim. <laughs> I don't know what's worse. Club Mario or Video Power? And... Um, I, I'm going to have to say that Club Mario is actually better than Video Power, but that, that's like a, to quote the angry video game nerd. That's like saying the shit I took today was better than the shit I took yesterday. Um, his game reviews are atrocious. Again, maybe not his fault. And... Um, but, you know, it was a novelty to see this kind of show. This guy's got, when I was a kid, this, he has this and this and this and this. I mean, I, you don't understand what it's like seeing somebody who has an NES, a Genesis, and a TurboGrafx-16. That was ridiculous. 
I knew a kid who had a ColecoVision and an NES hooked up to the same TV. That. Wow, that blew my mind. He had a ColecoVision and an NES. Okay. What did I have at this time? I had, I had, a, I had a TI-99 and an NES hooked up to Okay, okay. So, obviously... Johnny Arcade, <laughs> or Johnny Arcade, even has a pinball machine in there. All right, but it, it's 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 Narm and it's 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 cheesy Narm. So what happens after that? Well, after Johnny Arcade and, and all this stuff, the claim took the cartoons, repackaged them for syndication. Eventually, they ended up on cable and called it the Acclaim Masters. Uh, usually, but not always, um, I believe the Acclaim Masters also ended up airing on Sunday morning after the demise of Video Power. So what happened to Video Power? And I wish I kept these episodes for you guys, but I didn't. Video Power became a game show. These kids would come in, trivia, play some games, usually NES games, and then they would go, whoever was the winner would go through this double dare-like thing. Whatever they grabbed, they could keep, allegedly. And they had to find the secret game and all that stuff. There's always a Neo Geo there. I would have totally grabbed that. But see, I am a hardcore video gamer. Actually, I'm, I'm the hardest hardcore. I'm the most otaku of otaku, and I'm the hardest of the hardcore. A lot of you people don't know that. I don't play online. That's how, how hardcore I am with gaming. And yet I still find time for religion. But I would have gone ahead and grabbed the, the Neo Geo. I would have gone ahead and, and grabbed, you know, Street Fighter 2 or Star Fox or the Super Scope. Whatever. In Funhouse, hosted by J.D. Roth, this Double Dare-like thing, which um, bounced between KRLR Channel 21 and KBBU Channel 5, and they also had a version on Fox, just like they did with Double Dare, for like college kids or something. In Funhouse, I remember they always gave away the Nintendo Power Set. I always wanted a Power Set, but now I have a Wii Balance Board. If you figure out what I mean by that, then you'll realize why I'm glad I never got the Power Set. Um, but, yeah, I always wanted to be on that video Power thing. I always wanted to grab a Neo Geo. I have a Neo Geo X Gold piece of shit. Um, truthfully, though, I bought a lot of Neo Geo games on everything but Neo Geo. I do have one Neo Geo CD game left, King of Fighters 94. Um, and I say I might have it left. I may have actually sold it. I don't have a Neo Geo CD. If I did, I'd get a Neo Geo CD Z. And, um, okay, so the question is, why don't I have a Neo Geo? Um, price. It was the actual price. I, I never get around one because I was constantly buying games. I had a 3DO when the Neo Geo CD came out. In the original Neo Geo, um, you know, fuck the game collectors. These games should be ten bucks a pop. The collectors ruin everything. They, they truly, truly do. Um, I'm not talking collectors like Mr. Betamax who meticulously restores something. Just people who want a collection of things. Uh, come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Go to a psychologist and find out what's the neuroses causing you to collect. Everyone's like, oh, you have a big collection of games. No, I don't. I just buy games. Cheap. From thrift stores or... Zia Records, or when I got a coupon, or someone gives me a gift card, or something like that. I I don't go around buying games that often. I don't. I will go and I'll buy a stack of games. Sometimes, you know, whatever. And then it'll be like six months before I buy another game. All the games I have, I acquire just by buying. So, whatever. Back to Video Power and uh, Club Mario. This would not. This would be the final attempt, I believe. Video Power would be the final attempt because what precedes it was um, Starcade. What? Why does that word keep coming up? 
there was this reran on G4. And yeah, that, there's there's the point I'm trying to get to. On G4 was um, there was a show where people would play arcade machines. I have this on a on a Dragon's Lair DVD or something special edition DVD. Dragon's Lair. Um, Right, and they would go ahead and they would play this, uh, and then they—it's they, a game show from the '80s. I only saw a few episodes as a child, and I think Nickelodeon had a video game game show, but that doesn't count. Again, over the air is one thing, but cable is another. Yes, cable got G4, uh, ZDTV, which became Tech TV, which got bought by G4, also offered. Um, a video game show, which was originally GameSpot TV, then became X-Play. People would go into a, a Funko Land and walk out with a Game Informer magazine. Yeah, that's got to be the dumbest name. You know, when it comes to naming, give, give the name something cool. Like, even EGM is a dumb name. Game Pro, that's a name. Um, Die Hard Game Fan, uh, that's a name. Nintendo Power, Sega Vision, those are names. The official U.S. Sega Dreamcast magazine. The official U.S. PlayStation magazine. Come on. You know, what would I have called... Okay, let's look at this. If I was starting a video game magazine in the 1970s, I didn't want to call it video games. What would I have called it? I would have called it, you know, you know, gaming power. That's true. And if I went ahead and, um, like, Nintendo Power is a perfect game. So if I went ahead later and I wanted to start a video game magazine, Next Generation, that's a name. Edge. Just Edge. That's a name. Uh, so, like, if I did Xbox magazine. I would have signed up a deal. It should have been called X Play or or X World, something like that. And for PlayStation, it should have it should have had a, a good name, not PSF. What the hell does that mean? PSX. What does the X stand for? X doesn't stand for anything. X is just something people think is a cool letter. <laughs> That's it. So. X Play came out as Game Game Spot TV. Game Spot was originally VideoGames.com. It was started by EGM. Today, it is owned by CBS. Now, is that for weird? EGM, of course, is in the dumper. Nobody reads it. Um. Then there's all these other magazines and stuff like that. So. My grandpa loved Arena. I mentioned that in the driver episode. My grandpa loved Arena. He thought that that, <laughs> that was real. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. My grandpa watched G4. But G4, truthfully, gamers, you know, this is why I don't actually get along with a lot of video games. You got some fat fuck probably named Timothy. Who's never fucked a girl in his life. And he sits there. And he wants to hear a symphony uh, play his favorite game. Why? Why are you fucking Timothy fat fuck you? Sure, I listen to... Uh, WTMK, you know, MushroomKingdom.net. I listen to it all the time in my car. Uh, why? I can't stand the DJs on K KNPR's uh, classical music. I can't. They wreck things. <laughs> it's true. The DJs are awful. They don't need DJs there. Also, um... I don't want to hear my stuff played by a symphony. I know this is like a big deal and everything, but... Nah. Nope. Thank you! There's your sound effect for today. No, I'm sorry. I'm 
I'm a fat fuck. I'm the otaku of otaku, and I don't care about stuff like symphonies or whatever. Because it doesn't feel organic or real. It's mechanical. That's the real reason why I'm admonishing Timothy the fat fuck. Because when something's mechanical like that, it doesn't flow like water. And then eventually it uh, uh, breaks the uh, levee uh, and draw your own metaphor from that. The point is, you know, Video Power didn't know who they were going after. They were looking at it and they saw, you know, here's little 12 year old boys. That's our demographic, although we were 10 and 11. But, you know, little 12 year old boys, that's who they're 8, 8 to 12. That was their target demographic. And I say they hit it pretty well. Club Mario could have done well by having more of a video game slant with the show. You know, oh, we're reviewing the Burbs. Oh, wait, oh, oh, hold, hold on. We're reviewing the Big Blue. Whoa, hold on. Shouldn't you guys be reviewing, oh, I don't know, Super C? Uh, Castlevania? Okay, let's go now. Oh. But, you know, Mario stuff, Nintendo stuff. Nintendo just did not want to have anything to do with Club Mario. Unlike Acclaim, who went head-on into it. Acclaim was licensed. See, that's the thing. They may not have a license with NEC for the TG-16. And, um, but, you know, today's video game shows, uh, aside from YouTube, are just awful. Well, I mean... I didn't like another video game show until Retrocore. And it started appearing at, say, Ga 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 Domain. Um, I, is it say Gaga? I think it's say Gaga Ga Domain. Just type that in, say Gaga Ga Domain. Also, um, yeah, Retrocore. That, that, that was the way to do it. Um, you know, there's low key stuff or whatever. Uh, Sega CD Universe Vampire Mike not really a show I would love to do a show I was planning on doing a video game related show at the TV station I was last at but that a lot of things just don't go that way I don't have resources I don't have money I have you know all my money is gone especially because of the bad economy I don't have money to go buy a camera I don't have money to go and get a cast or anything like that. No, no, none of this crowdfunding crap either. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way unless it's Patreon, believe it or not. Patreon makes the most sense for, for producing this kind of show. Would I love to bring back video power? Absolutely. I can write the scripts and everything like that. For getting footage and everything, that's the fun part. You gotta sit there, play a game, figure out what to do with the footage. I'd make the show weekly, though, not daily, because I don't have a, a production house. Got to remember when when they made things like Club Mario, Video Power, even Super Mario by the Super Show, that all had to be filmed months in advance. That's probably why they weren't doing any new movie reviews or anything with Club Mario. And with Video Power, it it was probably a real guess. I mean, what what's going to be out and what's not going to be out? So then. You know, what's a safe thing? Well, we're going to review Golden Act. Whoa, we're going to review um, Ninja Gaiden. Did he review Ninja Gaiden? Why am I saying Ninja Gaiden for? Stuff like that. That's what he would do. And that was the only safe way to do it, was to, well, go back, and, you know. Because they don't know what's going down in the future, Magazines have the same problem. They're they're done weeks in advance before they hit the printing, and it, you know it's it's really hard to predict what is and what isn't going to be in the magazine. The internet, though, I mean, and that's where we have shows like that. And, but then these shows suffer from the other side. And I'm not completely for video game shows. I've seen more bad than good. The the, the top of the video game show. The, the very top, the absolute top, is the angry video game nerd. 
Everyone else falls in the middle, and then there's this bottom barrel stuff. And I'm not trying to do a show. Yes. Um, if I did a show, my Patreon goal would have to be up to meet production costs every month. And if I did a show, I that way by meeting that production cost, I can go get a set. Um, I can build a set in the garage, and that's not the problem. Um, I'm actually pretty good at using space. I would know where to green screen it by buying paint, or paint, um, so forth and so on. It, I have that experience. I know all the broadcasts how to. I just don't have the equipment and I don't have the money for it. I'd love to definitely do a show like Video Power or Arena or Club Mario or something like that. So about G4, other than they were trying to appeal to Timothy the Fat and Puff or, or Vinny, the guy who thinks he's a Fast and the Furious, um, so he would have to settle for uh, Devon Okoye and looks instead of, um, what's her name, Michelle Rodriguez. <laughs> okay, you can take that to mean whatever it means. Um, uh, Ms. Okoy is okay in uh, Dead or Alive. See, video game movies have come out and everything, so maybe Captain N, maybe Club Mara, maybe the CBS Super Arcade or whatever it was called. It was all ahead of their time. And there's more than enough ways to fill out a, an entire video game network if done right. Why didn't G4 get the reruns of Captain N and the Super Mario Brothers Super Show? Uh, why didn't they occasionally air the very awful, bad, double... I mean, Double Dragon. Bow, Battle Toads show. And yeah, there's Double Dragon as well. Double Dragon. Mutant League. Where on Earth is Carmen San Diego? This is all video game-related stuff. I mean, they can even get the old PBS reruns of Carmen San Diego's game show. That was made to run five days a week. There was no shortage at all of video game stuff. Let's talk about Carmen San Diego. Or I will, anyways. Not like there's a let's here. You're not in the live podcast. This isn't Rush Limbaugh where you call in and give me an opinion. And I don't have Mr. Snurdly, and I'm not Howard Stern. So, with Carmen San Diego, the uh, pilot episode was one hour aired on PBS. Um, you know what, uh, made my stepdad rot in hell because he kept grounding me from the TV as if that would do anything. You know, he didn't know, he, the, the guy's a son of a bitch and a bastard. He doesn't know the first fucking thing about being a parent. I do. And maybe I learned it from watching him uh, be a bad parent. Oh, where did you learn to be a good parent? Well, certainly not from you. Boy, where did you get this stuff? Who taught you how to use stuff? You did. I learned it from watching you. Okay, enough of that. Um, yeah, so here, here's the thing. So I watched the pilot, and uh, then I taped the episodes. I don't have any of these left. I taped the episodes of Carmen San Diego. See, anything video game related, and plus I like the Carmen games, but anything video game related, I was there. I was absolutely there. There's something someone noticed about anime uh, I watched. It wasn't until after the age of 35 I started watching non-video game related anime. Other than the occasional film like Perfect Blue or Akira. But like Ghost in the Shell. Why am I watching the Ghost in the Shell anime movie? Because there's a PlayStation game released by THQ in the US and Sony in Japan called Ghost in the Shell. Why am I watching Galgo 13 uh, movies and reading his, his manga? Because, well, there's a Galgo 13 video game on Nintendo. Two of them, in fact. Many more much later. So, uh, Radmo One Half, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, they all had video games for me before they had the TV show. That's just the way I am with anime. I understand now, today, a lot of anime already plan to have the video game. They all mostly originate from manga. There's very few that say we're going to start from manga um, and not do the anime and the video games. Most do. Yu Yu Hakusho, my first exposure was the 3DO Super Famicom game. Uh, Space Adventure Cobra uh, on the Sega CD. And I believe, uh, no, on the Sega CD. I don't, I don't recall having it on anything else. Although I do now. Uh, far east of Eden. Um, uh, Cobra Adventure. Uh, so forth and so on. 
so everything with me had a lot to do with video games. Reboot was, you know, well, that's not anime. So that, that, but Reboot is a video game show. It dealt with computer games that came in, and Bob the Guardian, who's from the net, was protecting mainframe with Dot Enzo from Megabyte, Hexadecimal, and, and the gamer himself. Yeah, that, that's video game related. That's totally... And there is a reboot video game, but it wasn't out at the time the show was on. I have it on PlayStation, by the way. But reboot totally nailed it. That's what a video game cartoon should have been. Um, the power team was wrong. Captain N was wrong. And maybe the designers of reboot watched those two and said, well... That's wrong. Let's do it right. Reboot got it right. Where if they had a license for the game. Imagine the first episode of Reboot if the game was Virtua Racing. Or F-Zero. Instead of a generic racing game. What about that one where Megabyte infects the user? And by the way, if I was the user, I would have quit the game. <laughs> Nullifying everybody. Shows you how much Reboot I watch. But... Imagine if they had a Star Fox license or Silphied license for that. I know people don't particularly remember Silphied. Vampire Mike does. But Silphied was huge. Silphied was huge on Sega CD. You have to be a Sega CD owner more or less to know what Silphied was. Sega CD kid. I was a Sega CD kid. My other friend was a Sega CD kid. We... I used my own money to buy a Sega CD as a 14-year-old child. Yeah, a child. Person's a child till they're 18. As a child, I had I had a Sega CD, and one of the games I had on there was Silphy. So Sonic the Hedgehog came out. The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, which today I appreciate for its humor, but back then I didn't really like it. And then there's the other one, Sonic the Hedgehog on ABC, Saturday morning. I'm not going to call it whatever people call it. Okay, I don't understand that abbreviation. You can explain it to me, and I don't give a shit. I call it the ABC's Sonic the Hedgehog. I thought I'd like that better. In reality, I like Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, and that other Sonic the Hedgehog can go straight to hell. However, oh, and then BKN had Sonic Underground. BKN... I don't even want to talk about because it re needs some more research. And then Sonic X. Sonic X is the worst cartoon ever made. I'll, I'll give you an example. Good cartoon, reboot. Reboot, one 30-minute episode of reboot feels like four and a half hours spent productively. Sonic X makes it feel like eight hours spent unproductively. And it's only a half-hour show with commercials. However, if I did syndication on Sonic the Hedgehog today, what I would want is, this is how I want the syndication to break down, is I want um, the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog for my weekday syndication. On Sunday, I want, um, I want the ABC Sonic the Hedgehog. On Saturday, I want Sonic X. And then Fridays would be Sonic Underground. And that's a that's a maximum effort there. And then with Sonic X, maybe a special would be the first two or three episodes would be the Sonic the Hedgehog anime from 1996 or 97, cut up into a few episodes. That's how I would do syndication. In fact, I I can make syndication packages for everything here. Uh, should video of power have gone the game show route. Absolutely. No. But it was probably cheaper than having a power team animation. That's why they did it. Huh. Uh, can I prove that? No. Can I speculate that? Yes. It gives me that speculation. I worked in television. It's Television is 100% cost. How much does it cost to do this? How can we make a profit from it? I bet a claim took a write a write off on the power team. So the game show route was perfect. SNK, Capcom, 
Konami, Nintendo, Sega, even computer game companies like Sierra and Activision, which are now owned by each other, would go to a claim and say, we will pay you to put our boxes prominently in the game show segment. And then, they, of course, they had the barter spots there. So, the claim probably made a very large profit as product placement, pure product placement on the second season of Video Power, minus Timothy the Fat Buck. While, on the other hand, it probably went the same way on Club Mario. All those little clips we see were probably product placement put there by, by companies. So, when they reviewed the Burbs, that clip was obviously provided by Universal, but uh, Universal probably paid Deke and Bull Dolphin Incorporated to go ahead and use that clip. The shirts, co MC and Tommy Treehugger wore, probably product placement. Again, I can't confirm that. If Kurt Weldon is listening, he can go ahead and confirm it. But he's a, he's probably a busy guy. He, he's been working, I think, for 40 years in uh, cartoon animation so um, can you know I, I would like it if Kurt Weldon went ahead and confirmed that nonetheless I think that's exactly also how it paid for itself and uh, then they're done so that that's the history of video game shows finally we, we get to and this is perfect for the end of, of today's podcast Sailor Moon Sailor Moon changed everything. It, it's the it's the uh, little thing, what do you call it, the middle of the hourglass where the sand has to filter through. Sailor Moon was that. While shows like Earthworm Jim and Dragon Ball, Street Fighter, Darkstalkers, Mega Man, all this stuff was being created. And Sailor Moon was right there it came out at the right time, the PlayStation era, where anime would look like anime in the cinematic. It came out when EGM, the most read video game magazine at the time, was um, was jacking off and putting cum all over anime. Everything. Anime, 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 anime. Anime started to hit big. Viz started to sell their comic book translations in bookstores and newsstands. Uh, DC and Marvel started to adapt the anime style uh, in their surviving titles. So everything, everything started to push through to anime. Sailor Moon was right there. And just like I said, EGM jacked off an anime. We know, according to the Bare Naked Ladies, a lot of people jacked off to Sailor Moon. Male and female. And that was that's the middle of the hourglass the sand was filtering through that led to Toonami that led to PlayStation and N64 games which led to things like Powerpuff Girls and Johnny Bravo gaining relevance because people were tuning in to Cartoon Network to watch Sailor Moon and after Toonami was over after they watched crappy anime like Ronin Warriors and outdated American cartoons that are lame, like Thundercats. Yes, the Thundercats are lame. And they watched Dragon Ball Z, which was by that point already 15 or 20 years old, I think. Then they would go ahead and they would keep it on. And what would play? They would play cartoon, cartoon reruns of, like, Dexter's Lab or Scooby-Doo or something like that. Well, Scooby-Doo's not a cartoon cartoon, so excuse me on uh, my mistake there. You know, Disney couldn't compete Fox Family couldn't compete. Nickelodeon tried to compete. Um, but I knew people who'd watch Toonami, watch Nick for an hour or two, and then come back and watch Cartoon Cartoons. Well, when I say people, I do mean kids. Yes, kids. Kids, little snowflakes who protest today because uh, they don't know how the constitutional process works. Yes, those little kids are today today snowflakes who protest. And that's what they would do. They would also 
watch Kids WB. So what they'd do is they'd watch Sailor... I, I don't want to talk about when Tsunami, Kids WB. That, that, that's not the point. That was a gimmick. Kids I knew would watch Kids WB. They'd watch Animaniacs, Tiny Toons, whatever. And then at 4 o'clock, they'd watch Sailor Moon and then go back. That's why I think that... Um, you know, I, 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 I didn't know kids who watched Pokemon, and then they would go back, watch Sailor Moon, and go back and watch Batman or Superman. Then those eventually ended up on Cartoon Network as well. So Sailor Moon went from broadcast syndication. Um, it may have had a slight network life there, or may have ended up like on USA, Cartoon Express, or whatever, Disney Channel. And then it ended up on Toonami. Why do I mention that? Is Sailor Moon a video game show? Well, from my perspective, it was, but I understand why it wasn't. Um, and I understood that at the time as well. I understand that it, the video games were based off of the anime, not the other way around. And those games were not coming to the United States. That was, that's what made me an importer starting in 1993. I started importing Genesis or excuse me, Mega Drive and Super Famicom games. And that led to me importing games to this day. I, I have a PlayStation 4 game on its way from Japan. Dead or Alive 3 Extreme Volleyball. What or whatever it's called. To save up for it to get. And yes, it's on its way right now. Sailor Moon is what introduced sexuality in anime and said it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There is no ist here for it. it. It's Sailor Moon. She's meant to be sexy. There's no way around that. Nostalgia Critic has a good review about Sailor Moon in an editorial. I recommend you go to Nostalgia Critic's editorial and ta see his take on it. Though he does try to slip in some leftist propaganda for some reason. Slyly, I caught it. And he knows damn well what I'm talking about. But nonetheless, Nostalgia Critic has the perfect editorial on Sailor Moon. I'm not talking about Sailor Moon. I'm talking about Sailor Moon as a product. As a show offered to me if I was a broadcaster. And that led to Pokemon. That led to all of this. That's why you don't understand unless I explain it. Sailor Moon was it. It was the turning point of all of this. Sailor Moon changed everything about gaming. Because Sailor Moon led to Pokemon coming to the United States. Sailor Moon led to the WB, the same people who were financing Toonami to finance further translations to 4Kids Entertainment for that. Sailor Moon led to Beyblade. Sailor Moon led to Bakugan. Sailor Moon led to Yu-Gi-Oh! Sailor Moon led to the acceptance of anime, which led to the acceptance of Final Fantasy VII. If anime wasn't hot at the time, Final Fantasy VII would have floundered on PlayStation. And what would have taken over then? Well, that's debatable, but probably the N64 because Sega already had anime games at the time, and they weren't doing well, like uh, Burning... No, not Burning Rangers. Uh, Panzer Dragoon series. Clockwork Knight series. Sonic itself was floundering. Shining Force was floundering. Uh, Magic Knight Ray Earth came out around this time, and it gained acceptance. But by this point, um, and I, I think Working Designs was was an idiotic company, but um, I'm kind of on their side on things. The, um... But see, the anime thing started. Working Designs did do anime and stuff like that. And then, you know, it came, it came about because I knew American retail stores that imported because the 3DO was an open system, no region lock, so they did import Japanese games. Yu Yu Hakusho and Sailor Moon was it. But Sailor Moon was the one that took off. Not in gaming, but in broadcast. That's why Sailor Moon is so important to both anime and video games as a video game show, as an anime show, to this day. No Sailor Moon, no nothing. So if you have anything 
whatever. I don't care. You can go ahead. You can make a donation to the Patreon, whatever. Coffee for Binky at gmail.com. C O F F E E, number four, B I N K Y at gmail.com, where you can leave a comment below or you can go to my Patreon. All right. Remember, Sailor Moon.